What's the crack, my happy face pullers? We all know by now that fitness enthusiasts and recreational lifters like myself love the gym. But we could all use a change of scene every now and then to double in other training methods and energy pathways. Today, we get away from the weight room to venture into the exciting world of sprinting. Sprints could burn as many calories as a much longer steady state cardio session because high intensity running increases your basal metabolic rate, meaning that you'll be burning tons of calories long after your training is complete. A great tool for fat loss. Sprints target major muscle groups. They are the athletic alternative to your traditional anabolic weightlifting exercises. All out dashes recruit and develop your largest, most powerful muscle fibers, the fast twitch type. Just avoid concrete as a surface to sprint on and go to your local park or a track field instead. However, not everything is great about training at such a level of intensity. Sprints are very taxing on your central nervous and musculoskeletal systems. As a general rule of thumb, you might want to avoid high-stress workouts in the following 48 hours to manage your fatigue levels. Absolute beginners and sedentary people should stay away from max effort training until they've built a good level of strength and mobility. Finally, sprints require a thorough and drill-specific type of warm-up to keep injuries at bay. In this video, I'm going to show you how I do it. Let's go! My warm-up protocol is divided into three distinct phases. The first one is general and aims to wake up my muscles and get an optimal level of mobility in key joints. I'm talking about shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles. I'm really going for this one. As you can see, I always include a plyometric component when I'm warming up my lower limbs to give them a little taste of the explosive motions that they are about to do. So usually lunges are followed by jumping lunges and squats followed by jumping squats. This is something I've always implemented myself in my training and so far I've never been let down. Right after, I will move on to running specific drills to get my central nervous system fired up. I like to perform these drills twice for about 20 meters each. I usually go for power skips, bis skips, straight leg shorts, and high knees. Although rarely talked about, this is the moment during the warm-up where I start visualizing the sprints that I'm about to perform. This helps me get in the zone at a mental level, while the drills reinforce this confidence at a more physical level. Oh yeah, stay hydrated my happy face puller, don't forget that! Once I've completed this section, I am confident that my body is prepared to handle high-intensity bouts of running. So the third and last part of the warm-up are short dashes that gradually go up in intensity and distance. That way, my hamstrings are getting accustomed to the great reaction forces coming from the ground when you stride. In order to avoid muscle imbalances and overuse, you want to make sure that you switch sides in every set. One will feel more natural and stronger than the other, but that is absolutely normal. Well, I think it's time. Let's run some sprints, shall we? Whenever you finish the sprints, walk back to the starting line. This is going to be all the recovery time you need before the next high-intensity burst of speed. As you can see here, 8 to 10 seconds of near maximal effort is all you need to stimulate your fast twitch muscle fibers and train within the ATP creatine phosphate energy system. I honestly think that I'm turning into a cheetah when I do this type of workout, it's great.
all in all, this type of explosive workout is going to teach you how to be more powerful. If you found value in this video, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Every Sunday, I'll be back here to show you that fun and fitness go hand in hand. And do your Facebooks. For real. I'm not kidding.